me walk with thee. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, say. Let me walk with thee. Oh, for a pair that will not That we not tremble on the brink of poverty or war. That we not more. together again praising the lord we are together again in one accord something good is going to happen i can feel it in my soul together again praising the lord we are together again praising the together again in one accord 
something good is going to happen. I can feel it in my soul together again. Praising the Lord. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, oh bless the Lord. Oh, praise his name. Hello, hallelujah, Lord. For great things that he has done, scripture declares, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah, we bless the name of the Lord. At this point in time, I want to open the field for one prayer. We bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So I'm going to open the field that that one person, they would raise their hymn or their sankey, whatever their heart desire, and they would go before the throne of grace on our behalf in the mighty precious wonderful name of jesus the christ we praise the name of the lord hallelujah hallelujah oh in a corner i hear a groaning in a corner i hear a groaning i tell you where look i come in oh look he going to put on it really white Oh, in a corner, I hear a groaning. In a corner, I hear a groaning. I said to wait, look, he coming. We gonna put on the lily white robe. In the corner, I hear a groaning. In a corner, I hear a groaning. I tell you wait, look, he coming. We gonna put on the lily white Oh, in a corner, in a mama, bomb. in a corner, I hear a groaning. I tell you, where do we come in? We're going to put on the lily white robe. We praise the name of the Lord. We bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you honor. Father, we glorify the name of the Lord. For your name is worthy, blessed God. Your name is high in counsel, blessed God. You deserve all the glory. You deserve all the praise. All honor belongs to you. You are the God of yesterday, today, and forevermore. You are the unchanging God. You are the God that cannot lie. Father, this morning, blessed God, I lift my voice unto you. Oh God, I lift my voice as a testimony of the goodness of God, how you have kept me thus far. Father, I honor you and I glorify you. In your presence, oh God, there is fullness of joy. Father, I thank you for the joy of the Lord. I thank you for the zeal of the Lord. I thank you, most mighty and merciful and gracious God, for showing up time and time again, blessed God. Even when I don't deserve it, blessed God, you show up, blessed Father. Even when I fall short, almighty God, you show up, blessed God. Even if it's just to clean me up, you show up, blessed God. Father, you show up in times and seasons of distress and grief, blessed Father. You have showed up time and time again, blessed God. So this is my story and this is my plea, blessed God, that I'm going to lift my voice unto you, blessed God, that I'm going to look unto the hills from whence cometh my help. Father, this morning, oh God, I come declaring, oh God, the name of Jesus. I come declaring, oh God, that it is you who have built this house. I declare, oh God, that it is you who have begun this good work. I declare, oh God, that oh God in your presence blessed God I am filled with joy blessed God joy unspeakable I declare that the joy that I have that this world didn't give it to me Father I come on behalf of your people blessed God my God and my redeemer for the name of Jesus every knee would bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus is the Lord Father it is you who have kept them blessed God it is you who have caused them to be here on this platform blessed God. So Father, I lift them up before you. I place them, oh God, at the altar of sacrifice where you hear and answer prayer. Father, I can only bring them before you, but I pray thee, oh God, that you search the content of their heart, blessed God, that you, sell, you massage and you soften their hearts, blessed God, that they would bow their heart equal to their knees, blessed God, that they would come willingly, blessed God, and offer themselves as a sacrifice unto you. Father, I thank you for what you have done in their lives. I thank you for the blessings, blessed 
blessed Father. I thank you, O oh God, even for their obstacles, blessed God, because I know it is by the trying and the testing of their faith, O oh God, that you would draw them unto you, blessed God. I thank you for your drawing spirit, blessed God. I thank you for their valley experience, Lord. I thank you for their mountain top experience in the name of Jesus right now, blessed Father. Oh God, I confess that Satan has no dominion over us. Father, I confess right now, blessed Father, that oh God, we are walking, oh God, according to your gracious will. I confess, oh God, how we love you, blessed Lord. I confess, oh God, that you have your perfect will, almighty and everlasting God. Father, your people, blessed God, that I'm just a servant to, almighty God. May you keep them, oh God. Father, grant me a spirit to serve, oh God, that I would serve in love, joy, and zeal, blessed Father. Oh God, almighty this time, and our blessed Father, help them to receive, oh God, with a heart of love, blessed God. An inquiring heart, Lord, a heart of acceptance, oh God, that thus said the Lord, my God and my Redeemer, what a day, blessed God, oh, what a blessing, almighty God, Father, a day that we didn't expect to see, blessed God, many thought they would have been cut off and gone, many thought that they would have been dead, many thought that the devil would have got the victory, but oh God, lo, the hand of God came down, blessed God, and you touched them during the course of the week, and oh God, you brought them to safe harbor. And this morning, oh God, I thank you for safe harbor. I thank you for deliverance, blessed God. Our mere mind, blessed God. Sometimes we are oblivious to the fact, oh God, through the dangers that you had brought us to, blessed God. We take it for granted that we woke up, blessed Jesus. We take it for granted that we see another day. We take it for granted that we are here, blessed God. But I know by God and my redeemer that it is by the blood of Jesus, it is by the hand of Jesus, it is by the orchestration, the intentional orchestration of God that we are sitting in your presence, that you have kept us and you have provided for us, blessed God. Father, you have provided more than needed, blessed God, even when we don't see it, blessed God, because we only see in part, Jesus, we see it half empty, oh God. But oh God, I thank you for the blessing that is filled, oh God, the cup filled and running over. This morning, oh God, we woke up, blessed Jesus, Father, we on the wake up call, blessed God, we are standing on our grave, and I give you all the glory and all the praise, oh God, almighty and everlasting God, Father, I thank you, Father, I worship you, Father, I honor you and I adore you, blessed God, oh, our feet must stand within thy gates, hallelujah, hallelujah, blessed God, my God and my King, I thank you for them, blessed God. I thank you for them, blessed Jesus. Continue to keep, continue to watch, continue to direct, blessed God. All those may bound in duty to pray for, oh God. Father, I bring them in your presence. Father, I pray, oh God, for forgiveness. I pray, oh God, for healing. I pray, oh God, for redemption. I pray, oh God, for your continual grace to be upon them. I pray, oh God, that they would walk in covenant, blessed God. Those who are walking, oh God, I pray for endurance, blessed God. Those who fainting by the way, blessed God. You know them better than I do. You know the innermost parts of their heart, blessed God. Pass by, blessed Jesus. Search every corner of the earth, blessed God. Look upon those who calling upon the name of Jesus. Father, and those who not calling you yet, blessed God. Help those who call in to real those who not calling in in the name of Jesus. For you have given us power, Lord. You have not given us a spirit of fear. Oh God, that we will boldly go, blessed God. My God and my Redeemer. Help us to be a good example, blessed Jesus. Oh God, remember them in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I lift them up, blessed God. Some wrestling with their own thoughts, almighty God. Some, oh God, weary and could scarcely get along. But oh my God, my God, my God, my God, those who knows the art of prayer, those who know where their war room is at, Jesus. Oh God, war, my God and the King. Come on, prayer warriors, and call upon the name of Jesus. For some could scarcely get along. Some don't know how to pray. Some forgot how to pray. Oh God, some here, them and the trials of this world has 
knock the prayer out of them. But Lord, the word says, mighty God, that the Holy Spirit already knew what to pray for us before we knew. But oh God, you said that you know the meaning of the grown. Those who are groaning, Lord, and they have not the words to tell you, blessed God. Meet them, blessed Jesus. Meet them on whatever level that they are at, blessed God. Father, for I know that your desire is not that none should be lost. So Father, I bring everyone before you, blessed God. Every church and every chapel, every elder, blessed God, every sheep of yours, blessed Jesus, that you, oh God, will continue to keep your hand upon them, that, oh God, that you will turn around, blessed Jesus. Oh God, you would strengthen, blessed Lord. Father, you would correct and rebuke in your name, blessed Jesus. Oh God, you would set up strongholds, blessed God, and you would break down barriers, oh God, in the name of Jesus, all power belongs to you. You are almighty. You are all powerful. And I believe, blessed God, I believe in the word of God. I believe in your promises, Jesus. My God and my King this morning, oh God, every sinew, every vessel, blessed God, every organ of my body cry out, how good thou art, blessed God, how wonderful thou art, oh God, what am I that thou art so mindful, blessed God, my God and my Redeemer. I thank you, blessed God. I thank you for your grace and your mercy. I thank you for covenant, blessed God. Cover your children, Lord, if thou be so pleased. My God and my King, remember Sister Hazel this morning, Jesus. Hazel Lewis by name, blessed God. You know the servant, blessed Jesus. You know the complaint, you know the argument, oh God Almighty. Remember Leslie Calendar, blessed Jesus. Father, it is not over until you say it's over. Father, oh God, the victory has already been won. Blessed God, my God and my King, those who have asked specifically for prayer, blessed God, I lift them up in the name of Jesus. I thank you for those who came back with a testimony that the prayer has been answered. I thank you this time and our Jesus. I thank you, blessed God. Father, do keep and watch over us, blessed God. Continue, oh God, to keep us in the bond of peace. Continue to keep us in the bond of unity, blessed God. I pray, oh God, that you stir within us continually the fruits and the gifts of the Holy Spirit, oh God, that we will be good workmen, blessed God. We will be vessels of honor and not vessels of dishonor, oh God. Redirect and refocus our mind and our thoughts on you. Help us to be just and true, blessed God. Help us to be consistent and persistent, oh God. Help us to be authentic, blessed Jesus. Help us not to add nor take away, but I remove every schizophrenia Phonic behavior, blessed Lord, my God and my Redeemer, every double personality, blessed God, let us be the same today, yesterday, and forevermore, according to your word, not according to this world, hallelujah, oh God Almighty, Lord, look down upon your people and have mercy and compassion, look down upon us, oh God, Father, right now on this platform, blessed God, and Father, wheresoever they are praying right now, oh God, because I know that there is no boundary with prayer, blessed God. Father, I pray, oh God, that if their prayer is according to your will and your desire, that we touch, blessed God. And oh God, that the prayer come up like sweet incense before your nostril, blessed God. Father, remember, Pastor Gray, blessed God. Look at the woman servant, oh God, toil in the vineyard, blessed Jesus. A woman that have a love and a zeal for you, blessed and God, that work diligently according to your gracious word. Father, remember the humble servant, blessed Jesus, my God and my King. I thank you, blessed God. I thank you, blessed God. In the morning when I wake up, I thank you. At the midday hour, I thank you. At the evening hour, I thank you. Every minute, every second, oh God, I thank you. I thank you for their blessing. I thank you for their breakthrough. I thank you for their deliverance, blessed God. My God and my King, oh, the joy of the Lord this morning, Jesus. Father, I glorify you. Father, I magnify you, blessed God continue to watch and cover us in no other name but in Jesus almighty name. Father, we touch and agree, be it done unto us 
according to your gracious word in the name of jesus in the name of jesus and let the church say amen 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 hallelujah we bless the name of the lord we serve a mighty god hallelujah we say it all the time that we serve a mighty God. So we kind of take it for granted. You see, words that we use all the time, we loosely say that, you, you know, uh, we serve a mighty God, you know, God is good, you know, had it not been for the Lord. And, and somewhere in between there, we lose the true essence and meaning and understanding that for real, for real, that had it not been for the Lord on your side, you would not be here. And I say we lose the essence of it because if we truly understand the essence of it listen now man we would leap from our seat we would leap in our hearts in our minds and we would give god all praise that is due unto his name for the, the little song says that he is worthy he deserves all the glory he deserves all your praise he don't deserve it partially hallelujah you don't he don't he don't deserve you to cheat him Hallelujah. It's time that we stop cheating God of what he rightfully deserves. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. I'm excited for God. I'm excited in the presence of God. I'm excited to be in the presence of, of, of his brethren, of his sheep. I'm excited to be in the presence of the sons and daughters of God because I understand the word that says that he gave me power, that he gave you power, and he gave the next person power, and he gave, look my man, it is a whole power central. If we understand the word of God, that's why when we get together, miracles supposed to happen, breakthroughs supposed to happen, because he gives some prophets and he gives some teachers, he gives each one a different gift. So that when we get together, we are supposed to mend a broken heart. You understand? Come on now, man. We gotta understand who's anointing we're sitting under this morning. I'm sitting under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I'm sitting under the anointing and the power of Almighty God. Not by man, but by God. Hallelujah. And I come understanding that whatever gift I lack, that there be it somebody within the body of Christ that has the gift hallelujah and because i understand that i'm excited hallelujah i'm not worried i'm not troubled i'm not dismayed by the things that i cannot accomplish in myself because what i cannot accomplish in myself god has already provided in our brethren hallelujah i just gotta accept it you just gotta accept it hallelujah the gift has already been given. We just got to accept it. Oh my God, my God, my God. I'm excited. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord because you don't know what I've been through. Oh God Almighty. You don't know what I've been through. You think you know my story. huh? You think I told you all my story. But oh God, what trouble have I seen and what conflict have I passed how sometimes I fought without, but my God, how I feared within. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't know. You don't know. Some of you don't even understand what you've been through. Oh, God. Huh? Some of you don't even understand where God has brought you from. My God. And until we come to that understanding, our praise will fall short. Our praise would be tainted. Hallelujah. We give him tainted praise and we're feeling nice. But oh God Almighty, look here. Oh God, I tell you what a God we serve. For what has he done for you? Hallelujah. I know what you want. Huh? I know you're praying for something, but can I encourage you this morning to think upon what God has done for you? Can I encourage you to take a minute before you start to drive and look in your review mirror and see what God has done for you? Hallelujah. Some of you need to look in your every mirror 
so you could get to your next level of praise because your present situation and circumstances is a stumbling block unto your praise unto the Lord. My God, my God, my God. I want to stay nearer to God. We got to stay in tune with God and his word. Look, mama, we got to minister to himself. We got to get excited in, 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 the, in the very presence of turmoil, in the very presence of, 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 of um, unknowing and uncertainty. We got to get excited. We get excited, not because we're doing nothing, you know, or not because situation change or circumstances change, you know, but we get excited because of the promise the promise not because of this present age job got excited because he said i know you gotta know that you know that you know in the latter day my god is gonna stand for me tomorrow day my god is gonna stand oh glory be to god i wish somebody knew that this morning i wish somebody would have received that word that you would take off thy bed you will shake off thy guilty floor hallelujah hang on you will praise god you will magnify the name of the god Listen, I don't know about you, but I can't wait till I see you all, huh? I can't wait till I come 580 Empire Boulevard to say about you, go see how I will dance. And you go see how I will put on and you want to give your most fancy praise, huh? The Bible says, let not your praise be for man to see, but praise him now, huh? Hallelujah. I don't need no song instrument. Me alone on these four walls, and I'm a jump like if the place full because there is no boundary within the spirit of man. The God that I serve is a spirit. Oh Jesus, and no amount of distance could keep the spirit, huh? The flesh and blood couldn't keep the spirit of John when he felt the spirit of his savior in the womb of his mother. He lived. Oh, Jesus, you got to learn to, to leap and praise while you're still in the womb. Leap for your deliverance is coming. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah. I wish you believe. I say I wish you believe because we got to understand belief puts us in a position to act. We say, well, we you mean you wish I believe? Your belief will cause you to act. Your belief don't cause you to sit idly and wait around and wear the situation. Hallelujah. Oh God, I, I want to go into the topic today. Hallelujah. Your belief do not cause you to sit idly, heaping over your neighbor fence. Oh Jesus, the word today. Stop peeping over your neighbor fence. When you peep over your neighbor, friends, you will be discouraged. You will compromise. Hallelujah. When you peep over your neighbor, friends, you begin to compare. You begin to pull your God from the throne that he's sitting on. You begin to doubt God. Hallelujah. And you begin to say, God, well, why then? And why not me? Hallelujah. Why God? The book of Exodus is the scripture reading. Exodus 20 and 17. Hallelujah. And it says that thou shalt not covet. Hallelujah. Thou shalt not desire. My God. I, I, I say I want to go into the topic because if you understand the hand of God in your life, there will be no need for you to covet, to desire, to peep over, to get out of your land, to be envious of no man. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Huh? Sister Joy spoke to us about, listen to me. If you're going to win, if your goal is to win, you got to have a winning mindset. This morning, I want to realign. Hallelujah. Aisha said, be not envious of the runner that is running next to you. My God, my God, my God. Run it and mute it, Red. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. Naturally, 
Our natural thing is to look. Our natural thing is to gaze. Unless, unless we are in bonds, which means unless we are bound. Hallelujah. That's the only time we stay focused. You see, a runner that runs a race from the time that he begins to look back or look at the left or the right of the runner that is running next to him. He loses focus. He loses his stability. Hallelujah. Oh my God today. Stop peeping. Stop peeping. Oh God, stop peeping. And you know peeping is wrong. Hallelujah. Those of us that grew up in the, the Caribbean, we know it's wrong. Huh? Because when we peep and we, we, we jump back. Huh? We know in our heart. Let me tell you, because peeping causes envy. Envy causes strife. Cause you to compare. You hear some work going on. Huh? Or you stand up in the race and you're waiting. You're waiting to hear the trigger to go. But the runner next to you begins to jump high. They're jumping higher than you. Huh? They begin to stretch in a way that you do not possess. And as long as you stay focused and keep your eyes ahead, guess what happens? You are not distracted nor intimidated. Peeping keeps you intimidated. Cause you to see things that are not as if they are. Oh God, the turtle on the air. What did the turtle do? He did not bother. Huh? What he did was stay consistent with what the race that he had to be. Be consistent with that which God has entrusted you with. Oh Jesus, somebody thinking about the gift. Somebody thinking about the gift. But let me say to you, the first thing that God has entrusted you with is self. He has entrusted you with his Holy Spirit that dwells within you. Oh God, hallelujah, you better get that. You better get that. He has entrusted you first, you. Before he entrusted me with you, he entrusted you with you. He says what? That your body is the temple of the living God. So the living God has entrusted you, this sinner man, with his, his temple. Come, 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 come. My God, we gotta understand for real, for real, for real. I've been saying it day in and day out every time I get an opportunity because it's the one thing that rings in my mind consistently you gotta settle your identity in christ you gotta settle who you are everything is based on you knowing who you are it don't matter what your neighbor is doing it doesn't matter that there's a pro and you're running the race and there's a pure breed or there's a pedigree next to you. It doesn't matter that there's a stallion next to you and you are just a wild horse. It don't matter. What matters is that you stay consistent. You run the course. You trust God for his grace. You trust him for his mercy. You believe who he is. You believe him for who he says you are. Not who you say you are, eh? Because a lot of time, who we say we are and who God says we are are in direct conflict with each other. So we gotta, we gotta settle this identity, Christ. Who does Christ say I am? He says, in me, you are more than conquerors. That's what he says, you are. He says, in me, I have given you all authority in me. I have given you power. He says, in me, I have made you no longer servants, but I have made you sons and daughters. In me, I have made you heirs unto the throne of God. In me, in me, who does Christ say you are? You got to get it. You got to get it. If we don't get it, we're going to lose. 
No wonder why we losing. No wonder why we, we fighting and we feel like we we just going through wars that we battles we cannot win. No, no wonder why, no matter what goal we set up, we cannot accomplish. We struggle. We struggle because of a lack of identity. And as a result of lack of identity, we peep in because we're not sure. I need confirmation. I need to confirm. Let me see what the neighbor put up. You know, long time when Christmas time, you're, you're, you're dressed in your house and you're clean and you're not putting up your curtains until like 1201, not 1201, um, um, uh, uh, about 1150, 1155, because you don't want your neighbor who you know is peeping to see a curtain. Like if your neighbor could really go and buy a curtain like yours at that time. Listen, we got to function in our lane. Otherwise, we're going to miss it. We got to function in our lane. Otherwise, we would miss. Because why are you busy looking or peeping over somebody's fence to see what they're doing, how they're accomplishing it, and why they're accomplishing it? And you don't take time to tend onto the field that God has put you in. You're going to end up in problems. You would end up in problems. Let me say to you, right? Peeping over your neighbor fence cause vision distortion. It's a joy stealer. Huh? It causes you to be envious. It causes stress. It causes you to compare with others. You compare in the husband you have. Huh? Like, like who? The neighbor ain't choose your husband. You choose your husband. So now you have to learn now how to work with what you got. You better take it to God and go study about all the neighbor husband cutting the lawn. Because he prevent you, he cutting the lawn on the outside and he cutting sheep in the inside. Stop peeping over your neighbor fence. You're envious of the neighbor children and all the accolades and, and how they became a doctor and indoors on the inside. The heart is not right with God. Stop comparing and peeping over. Stop looking. You're comparing the finances. But look at how much money they have. And I think and I can't. Stop. Learn how to manage your money better. And stop envious of the neighbor money. Because it's not like the Lord is not giving you. Because he said that his desire is not for you to suffer. So if his desire is not for you to suffer, I know that he's giving you. And if he is giving you and you're not managing it well, peeping over your neighbor friends will only cause you more distress. Come on. Come on. We're comparing the homes. You say, oh God, look at the big house them built. I know they're not working no way. But how she manage that? Huh? How she manage that nice man? And he's a good man and I can't get one yet. Eh? How them manage that? You, you see she? And you start to compare. But what does God have in store for you? You can't figure out what God has in store for you if you're only peeping and comparing. Too much time is being wasted. You are wasting precious time comparing and peeping. The time you take to peep, indict yourself in a good matter and say, Lord, what wouldest thou have me to do? Because I know that you bless me. He's going to bless you at the level. He's going to bless you according to the gift and the anointing on your life. He's going to bless you in a way to get you to where he wants you to be. Some of us, the blessing that we ask and we require him, is it, it will take us to a place where God doesn't desire us to be. Come on. If some of us get money like the, like the neighbor, we forget about God. Or like the Caribbean people, they say we spit on black people. You forsake your family. You Right now, you don't have it, so you say no. When things we don't have that we want, we just say no. You know, if I get it, haven't you had people in your life that have said, if they have guilt, mm -hmm. you know, you is my good friend, or you is my sister, or you is my mother, 
You is my daughter. Do you know? Here now. If I come in a piece of money in the morning, you know, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to give you, you know, if I win, you know, you win. But yet still, when you're in distress and you call upon them, they fire, you can't find them. So if you can't find them when they don't have, when they have, you think you're going to find them, you better think again. You better think again. Listen to me. God is not slack in his promise. He's not a God that lies. He's not a God that can be mocked. So if he said that he's going to do this for you, you better believe that he's going to do it. Hmm? Listen to me. God only makes original. God don't make carbon copy. Listen, what are you talking about, girl? When God decided to make Eve, he didn't copy he made an original that is unique to her identity of being a woman, of being the mother of the earth. Adam has not that capabilities. Come on. We got to we gotta get out of, of this place, this war zone. We, there's some things that we have to settle. We have to settle in we mind. We have to settle. God makes an authentic you. What you were created to do, I was not created to do. Don't make nobody fool you. I don't care. You have the picket fence. I don't care. You have all the money. I don't care if you have the night and shining armor. Some have the night and shining armor and they lack, they lack the picket fence. Some have the picket fence and they lack the night and shining armor. Some have the picket fence and the night in sh and shining up armor, and they, 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 they are barren. Some have, have the night and shining armor, and they are financially destitute. Each one of us, God has intentionally and deliberately kept us in need of something and has left us wounded. Yeah, that's what I said. So you mean this all-powerful, this all-healing God has intentionally? Yes! Because without a wound or a need, we will not refocus our attention unto God and we're going to keep peeping over the neighbor fence. Outside peeping. You're peeping, you're peeping. All day you ain't realize you've been peeping. But then you hear boo something in your house. What happens? You run and you forget the peeping and you say, Oh God, what's going on in my house? It's time that you stop peeping and tend to your house. Stop being envious of what they're doing. Let them do what they're doing. Hallelujah. Some doing good and some doing bad. The Bible tells you either way, do not envy the good, neither do not envy the bad that they do. Hallelujah. Don't deny your uniqueness. Do not deny who God has called you to be. Do not deny it because before you were in your mother's womb, he took his time and he created you. No matter how much you look like your mama, no matter how much the blood them match, your identity is not the same. God has made each of one of us unique. Don't deny your uniqueness by trying to copy somebody else. That's it. We all could never be on the same playing field until we get to eternity. That's the only sign that we all would be on the same field. But until then, huh? different levels, huh? different dreams. Your dream is to be a doctor. But the poor garbage man, you wouldn't leave the man fence alone. You're hanging on the fence every day and you're peeping. You're making a hole in your fence. You're making yourself uncomfortable to peep and see what your neighbor accomplished. You know, gosh. Come on. Come on. We gotta wake up from our drowsy nature of sleep and understand
cannot be perfect because God's desire for you, his greatest desire, it comes with your eternal life. So he don't care if you're uncomfortable sometimes in this body. If it means that it's going to bring you closer to God, then he's going to do it. He is going to do it. Ah, uh, when you peep, I said it, it, it look now, it mess up, it divides your attention. Huh? Luke 9 and 62 speaks about being distracted or turning back. Or turning back. It says that any man who puts his hand to the plow and turns back that you know good. You know good. Huh? You ain't worth nothing. To turn back means that you get distracted. If you get distracted, then it means you have taken your eyes off of God or off the original race that he had set before you. Um, when Paul said that he is pressing forward and that he is running this race, in the olden days, what they did, they would put the trophy where the runners can see the trophy. And they kept it there until the race was over. You see, when you take your eyes off the prize, you will faint. You will fall. I need you to get it. You see, I, I, I got it. Eh? I got it this morning. And because I know the power of getting this one right here. Listen to me. Because none of us are exempt, you know. Even in ministry, we have ministries that is striving and they're not walking within their call because they were envious of the neighbor's ministry and they have fashioned their ministry to be like the neighbor ministry. So they have a functional ministry, successful in the eyes of man, but in the eyes of God, they are not doing what thus said the Lord for them to do. What did God say for you to do? We don't understand that and we feel every success that we have in life that God wants it. I learned that. I learned that in my valley, in my wilderness. Because while I was on the mountain top, Aisha, I taught the success and the smell of sweet success and the cool breeze that I was feeling that it meant that it was well, not realizing that you could be in success and still not be in the place that God wants you to be. Oh God, somebody asked Jacob. Jacob was with his, with his uncle Laban and God allowed him to prosper. When Israel went to Egypt, God allowed them to prosper, but it wasn't the place that God had intended for them to be. Oh God, don't allow peeping over your neighbor fence. Allow you to draw up dreams and goals that are not according to the will of God for you. Don't. Don't you do it. Don't you start things that God didn't resonate in your spirit. Don't you take on adventures that is not within the will of God. God has his will for you already. But what you have to do is exchange that peeping, comparing, comparison, envy yourself with a self of gratitude. Because the gratified you will be satisfied in your heart 
Paul said, I know how to be a base and how to be a gun and still be happy. The writer says that whatever my lot, thou hast caused me to say, it is well. How you could be going through uncomfortable things? It's not easy, you know. I know, I know. I be lay hard on all you, yeah, I know. It's not easy. Living next door to somebody who has a mansion, a picket fence, the night and shining armor, the well endowed, well behaved, well mannered, God fearing children. And you living next door. No husband and three children that bad like yours and don't want to hear about God. Huh? No food, your roof leaking. And for you to not every now and again peep over the fence. I don't want to not be real with you. The very best of us, we all peep. But I tell you, if you exchange it for gratitude, you will be satisfied that you know what? My roof have holes, but I have a roof. Huh? Huh? Yes, them children bad, but oh God, you spare their life that I could pray some prayer and call and plead the blood of Jesus upon them that he would deliver them. Huh? God has granted you opportunity and when you begin to see your opportunities and your many blessings that god has given unto you the next man blessing don't matter you begin to praise god for them too instead of peeping you openly say neighbor morning because now you're no longer upset with the neighbor because of what the neighbor accomplished and you don't have. You say, neighbor, oh God, neighbor, you put up some new lights. Congratulations. It looks beautiful. Oh God, neighbor, it looks sweet too, but I love it. Instead of your peep, because in your peeping means that you're hiding, you know, and you're grumbling in your heart and say, I don't know, hmm? when God go bless me, she likes to show off, eh? Poor neighbor ain't showing off. The neighbor is not showing off. It is your perspective of how you are seeing it. Because you're a people and not a gratifier, you have no gratitude. Because your gratitude don't stop at you. What are you telling me about? I suffering and I singing. Look, she have how much money. She could, she know me I'm a and hungry. She could give my late 20. And she had given me none. I must have gratitude and be thankful for she. The word of God says to love your neighbor as you love yourself. So the same thing that you want for you, that your neighbor has accomplished, you ought to have gratitude. That's what the word says. We want to walk, but we don't want to walk according to the mandate of God. The mandate of God is real. The mandate of God cannot be compromised or stressed or ostracized. We have to stay in alignment if we are to accomplish and successfully run this race that is set before us. Each one of us have we part. Aisha destiny is not mine. Jewel destiny could never be Hillary destiny. Huh? Never. Never in a million years. That's why I keep saying that God, when he speaks, I don't care what message it is that you are hearing. I don't care who's the messenger. You got to listen for the message behind the message. Because God is speaking to you. You got to say, speak, Lord, thy servant hear it. What it is you're saying to me? Give me Samuel's air. Give me the heart of Samuel, Lord, that I would hear what you have to say about the matter. Because God has the conclusion of your matter. He has the answer. The answer is within the message, but you gotta search it out. 
never say no is saying to the neighbor. Huh? He probably telling your neighbor clean up. It's easy for us to understand what he's saying to the next man. But when it comes to deciphering the message for self, huh? self, what is it that God is saying? That's the one we miss. Because we're busy trying to unfold the mysteries and the blessings of the neighbor. We hook up on the neighbor fence. Get off the neighbor fence. Get off. Get off while there is still time. Come down. The word of God says, Zacchaeus, come down. I am going to your house. The Lord wants to conversate with you. He want to talk to you about your provisions. He want to talk to you about the diameters of your temple. He want to talk to you about your vessels. He want to talk to you about your field. But you only telling him about the neighbor. He trying to tell you what does say the Lord. But every time he tries, you're interrupting him to tell him about the neighbor. My God. My God. Come on. Stop it. Stop it. God has not called you to be the best in this world at anything. God has not called you to be the best at anything in this world. What he has called you to be is the best you can be. Given your background, experience, opportunities, and ability. In other words, he has called you to be the best you according to your shape. Because your shape is determined by your background, your experiences, your opportunities, and your abilities. God is not going to cause you or call you to function in nobody's step. The house the neighbor have, if they do in order to do wife swap, if they swap, and they give it the neighbor house and the neighbor man, you realize, oh God, me can't do that, you know, because that man saying them right through. That man want Esther, you know, Esther from the Jeffersons. And, and you know, Esther, Florence. And the man sit down and he had to come and say, yes, sir, yes, master. You realize I can't, I can't do that. You realize all the other things that they have to perfect them because the things that God has left you in want of, it is to perfect you. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? When God recognized Jacob was getting comfortable down by Laban in a foreign land where he did not belong, down in the neighbor yard, God started to stir things up and shake it up and cause Jacob and speak to him and say, listen, Jacob, come, come. Time to get up and come back in your land. And he knew that Jacob was not yet still prepared. Huh? Jacob knew it was God blessing him and he was boastful about it, but yet still he did not repent. So God said, listen, I need to talk to you for yourself. Come, come, separate yourself from them people. And let me tell you something. You think all the time that God will say, you know, this, that, do this, do that. And, and you know, the Spirit tell me. It's your wrestle. It's your wrestling time. God is speaking to you. When the wrestle begins to happen, Jacob said, 
I will not let you go because he didn't quite get the message yet. So he refused to let go of God, refused to let go and wrestle until you get the answer. And when you get the answer, he will bless your waiting soul. That's the word. You're going to know when he blesses you out of each situation that you come out of because he will change your name and your nature. <laughs> he is going to change your nature and you will no longer be called Jacob and you will be left with a wound on your side that reminds you from whence you came. As a result of Jacob wound, you know, Jacob recognized that God is foremost in his life. Jacob recognized that, listen to me, God. Oh, God, send, send them people, let them go quick and tell me, brother, I'm coming. Tell me, brother, to forgive me that all this that I have, that it belongs to me, that may God give it to me. But Jacob did not get prideful and boastful. He said, I'll give you all this. Are you willing? Are you willing to surrender unto the will of God? Are you willing to surrender unto what God has called you to be? Stop peeping. Be grateful. Be grateful. Huh? Stop saying, why them? Stop asking, why me? Why do I get all, why, why do they get all that I have? Have you not found yourself in inner position? All right, all right. Everybody don't like to be ting because everybody wants to be like, you know, everybody wants to be branded as holy and hallelujah and sanctified and oh my gosh, you know, I'm just filled with the Holy Ghost. But I have had moments where I said, God, why then get in my blessing? I walk in according to your will. I talk in according to your will. God, I'm calling upon you. I love my brother, brother, look now. I pay my tithes. I'm doing my best. But yet still, why are they getting the blessing that I supposed to have? Can I ask you a question? How do you know what blessing you supposed to have? How do you know? How do you know? You see why I was asking that question? It was because of the flesh that said, or this world that said, you're supposed to get your boyfriend, you're supposed to get a husband, you're supposed to make children, you're supposed to have a house, you're supposed to, you're supposed to be financially blessed. It was because the blessing that I had inhabited in my mind was an illusion of this world. It was an illusion and a delusion of what this world has pronounced on me. But the God that has pronounced a blessing on me said different. He said, I'm going to bless you, but it's going to be according to your shape. I'm going to bless you, but it's going to be according to your shape, Aisha. I I'm going to bless you, Jewel, but it's going to be according to your shape. I want to come down. I want to come down. Let me tell you, there is power if we trust God. If we trust in God, there is power. If we eliminate our peeping symptom, huh? Because peeping is only a symptom of a disease. <laughs> peeping is only a symptom of the disease of doubting God. 
Your real disease is doubting God because you doubt and you are uncertain. You peep. You're doing a test. You have the answer, but you're unsure and you doubt. So you peep in your neighbor paper. You write the wrong answer. After the test, when the teacher corrects it and you go and check it, you say, I have the right answer, you know. But you can't tell nobody that the answer you change is because you peep over your neighbor friends. Oh, Jesus. Look here. Look here. Look them and y'all watch and see the miracle of God. Watch and see the work of the Lord. How he is good. Huh? You gotta do the best that you can with what God has given you. Stop questioning God's love for you. Stop questioning God's justice and God's wisdom because that's what we do. Ultimately, that's what we do. Seek out to kill your peeping spirit. Do what Psalms 104 says and enter into the gates of the Lord with thanksgiving and into his courts. Huh? Praise him when you don't understand. Praise him when you don't have the answer. Praise him in every situation and every arena of your life. Because in due time and in due season, he would make it plain. And that which he had promised to you, if you are faithful and abide, he would cause it to come to pass. I'm going to close with Hebrew 12 and 1. But before I close there, let me testify about coming into the knowledge of truth. Um, during this month, I hope Nadia don't mind that I'm going to share this. Um, during this month, that is Nadia's birthday, I, I, I normally... Every day, religiously, would say happy birthday until her birthday. I would do little trinkets, whether it be a card, whether it be a notes, whatever, little things, big things in between. Because it's not about the material thing, but it's just the reassurance of the love. And she's going to be 26. And I came to a realization and an unfolding of an epiphany, a great issue that I, have been, that I have asked God about and wrestled with for years. And peeped over my neighbor fence, causing myself great distress and grief. Eventually, I stopped peeping, never understanding or being oblivious to all the while that I was peeping and asking God, why have you given them my blessing and not me, not realizing or oblivious to the fact that he had blessed me according to my shape. But it's just that I couldn't see it because my eyes were full of envy and grief. My God. No. So, one of her gifts, I put pen to paper. And I wrote on the 5th of October. And as I began to write and I kept writing and I said to her, I have always told you because I'm expressing my love and I said, I've always told you that I chose you. And I said, that makes you 10 times more special than the next child. I said, some people got pregnant and they wasn't ready. They didn't plan it. I said, but I chose you. Let me tell you something. We look for every opportunity to get the glory. And until God gets the glory, he's gonna keep us in a position where we would keep peeping because we're not in a spirit of gratitude. 
to her writing. But as I penned that and I said to her, I have always told you that you are chosen. I heard the Spirit of God said to me clearly, Esther, the thing that you asked, I have given unto you. It is not you that chose her, but I have created her for you. So all the time that I was asking of him, he was creating a special child that needed a special woman like me. That he didn't want to be tainted by another, but he wanted her to be the firstborn. What an epiphany. What an epiphany. I didn't choose her. But God created her for me and me for her. So I had to wait while the neighbor had two, three, four, five, and six children. Children they couldn't mind and children they couldn't mind. If I wasn't busy being envious, if I wasn't busy in self-pity, I would have seen and understand the blessing of God. That he took time and he created this special being for me. Not by chance, but intentionally. And I said, who knew that my answer to my question would have came on the eve of my daughter's 26th birthday? What a time. I say nothing can steal my joy. What shall I say then? If God before you, who can be against you? God is for you. God is for you. As long as you abide in the will of God, he is for you. Even when you're not abiding, he said before you turn away from your sin, I had sent my son Jesus. He already paid the price. Even when we didn't surrender. So even when you're not for God, he's still for you. He is waiting. He is calling you. Come home. Come home. Come home. Let me close. Hebrew 12 and 1. Says let us lay aside every hindrance, every burden, and sin which so easily entangles us or besets us. And let us run with patience, with endurance, with toleration, tolerance, with stamina, the race that is set before you. Heaven bless you. Heaven keep you. I pray God that you got a word. I pray God that you heard from the throne of God. Most importantly, I hope that you accept the word of God. And now you will do some rearranging and some adjustment where the adjustment needs to be. Hallelujah. And you will say, God, who am I? What am I? that you are so mindful of me. God bless you and God keep you. I love you. Stay sweet. Stay blessed. Stay, stay rejuvenated. You know, stay under the umbrella of God. Let nothing, let nothing, let nothing, let nothing separate you from the love of God. God bless you, everybody. Grace, mercy, and peace in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the soon coming King. I'm going to ask Sister Aisha to bring us down in prayer. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for
giving us this amazing word so that we can take this not only for today, but we could utilize it and apply it to our daily lives, God. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for bringing us all here so that we are able to commune together, gather together, and worship you as a whole, God. Heavenly Father, I ask that we continue to not only learn and take your word serious, but we continue to apply it. God. Heavenly Father, help us to continue to push forward and not look back, but only remember the wounds so that we can continue to push forward onto you and believe and trust in you, God. Heavenly Father, at this time and hour, when we say trust, God, I ask at this time and hour that we mean trust and we trust fully, God, 100%, God. Heavenly Father, at this time and hour, I want to thank you for this day. Thank you for bringing us here once more, God, and I continue to ask for your blessings, for your grace and your mercy, God. Continue to help us understand and realize that we are enough, God, and that our shape is unique, God. Heavenly Father, continue for us to tap into our own shape, God, so that we can, when we come together, that it's amazing, God. It will be a miraculous sight, God. Heavenly Father, continue for us to, to take everything around us seriously, God. God, you know the prayer list at this time and hour, whatever that they need, whatever that they request, God, I ask that it's granted unto you, especially if it's according to your will, God. Help us to understand that you are in charge, God. You are in control and you are the one who sits in the driver's seat, God. Heavenly Father, continue to bind us together continue for us to instill love in ourselves, God. I know that you love us unconditionally, but I ask that we continue to love those that surround us intentionally and unconditionally as well, God. Heavenly Father, I thank you and I glorify you. I love you and adore you. Amen. Your mic is on mute. Eternal never rise, God. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Father, we give you praise and we give you honor and we give you glory. I touch and agree and come and agree. I touch and come and agree and with Sister Aisha's word. Blessed God, may you bless us. May you keep us, Almighty God. Continue to keep your hands steady upon us. Let your word, blessed God, saturate us. Let your word cover us. Let your word empower us, blessed Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, be it done unto us according to your gracious way. We thank you, O oh God, and we look into your hands for many more mercies. In Jesus' conquering name, amen. And now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us all now and forevermore. May the Lord watch between you and I while we are absent one from another. May the Lord watch between you and I while we are absent one from another. Heaven bless you. God keep you. May he cause his light and his countenance to shine upon you. May he give you strength. May he give you peace. May he continually overshadow you in no other name, but in Jesus almighty name, the peace of God and the love of God I give it to you in Jesus conquering name. Amen. 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 And amen. God bless everyone.